right, guys, what is up? Here with the hammer, and we are ready to do some just some betting and some prop bets. I got 10 locks that I'm going to roll with, and you can roll with them in any kind of which order. And then Hammer's got some games that he's looking at. So uh, anyway, Hammer, I guess this is a Hammer's betting corner. Uh, what yeah, you got, buddy. buddy. <laughs> you All got, right, well, buddy? it's a pretty big slate today. Uh, I mean, on Sunday, I should say. But um, I... There's a couple of games here that I might tend to stay away from. And those are usually like like larger, uh, anything more than like seven and a half, six and a half, seven and a half. I try to stay away from. But I do like the Packers minus three and a half at Chicago. The Packers always play well against Chicago. It looks like Aaron Rodgers is supposed to play. So the Packers are actually the favorite here at minus three and a half. So I do like that here. Um, I like Detroit at home minus one against Jacksonville. That's essentially a pick em. I do like Detroit to win that game. They've been playing really well lately. Um, I also like, I also like, uh, Cleveland, uh, at minus seven here. Now I tend to stay away from the, the whole numbers and the half number is what they call the hook. So basically, you want to try and get anything with a half number. Um, in MGM, you can edit your own line. So if you can get Cleveland minus six and a half here, see if you can get Cleveland minus six and a half here. I do like Cleveland to win by a touchdown, to return to Deshaun Watson. Cleveland's just a better team than Houston, and they have the weapons. Now that inserting Deshaun, I think they're much better uh, than the Houston Texans. And I, I like them to win by a touchdown. So if you could get them minus uh, six and a half here, it's currently at minus seven on MGM. I love, love, love the Miami Dolphins getting plus four in San Francisco. Um, San Francisco hasn't looked that good as a, as an offensive juggernaut per se with all the weapons they have and Miami is just rolling right now. Everything's in place with Miami. So I like Miami plus four on the road in San Francisco. Um, another game I do like, they have the chargers at plus one against the Raiders. I do like the chargers here. I, I think that uh, the the Raiders Vegas is just very they're very up and down. Um, I know you know the Chargers have been up and down as well, but I do like the Chargers here plus one, essentially a pick 'em. I do like the Chargers in this game straight up. Um, they have the Dallas Cowboys here minus ten and a half against Indianapolis. I would stay away from that. I think Dallas is obviously the better team. But Indianapolis is still a pretty good team. You know, Jeff Saturday's got them playing fairly well. He's got, you know, obviously all his best guys in there and running the ball with Jonathan Taylor. So I do like the Dallas Cowboys to win straight up, but I would stay away from that 10 and a half number. That's just a massive number there. And um, yeah, so those are my best bets so far. I know the Seattle game. Some people have some questions about the Seattle game. Matthew Stafford is currently out for that particular game. And the line there is minus seven as well. So I would definitely take the Seahawks once again, if you could get them minus six and a half, because if you do take them at minus seven and they win by a touchdown, you know, then that, that cancels out your bet. It's what we call a push. So if you could get Seattle minus six and a half, I would like that a lot better than minus seven. And those are hammers picks. There are some other games, but you know, I'm not, too crazy about some of the games. I know Minnesota and the Jets. The Jets have a really good defense, and Mike White is playing pretty well. So that number is Minnesota minus three. Um, I would probably take Minnesota straight up. I don't, you know, they have, like I said, the Jets have a good defense, but I, I would just take Minnesota on the money line there. Um, and yeah, so those are my pretty much my best bets. Um, like I said, there are some other games, but they're they're tough calls and. You know, it's a little hard for me to lean one way or the other um, on those. But those are some of the picks I really like for this upcoming week. <laughs> and uh, if you play underdog, I've got a few picks for you. I got 10 picks here. I've got three running backs and seven wide receivers. So if you're not signed up uh, to underdog, uh, the link the link is below. Uh, make sure you use the, uh, the code. Dynasty life fantasy. But anyway, um, I guess let's start with the three running backs. First running back is Kenneth Walker, 73 and a half rushing yards. I think finally he gets back on track, um, hopefully against the Rams. 
Um, so that I do like Latavius Murray, only 53 and a half rushing yards. I'll take the over on it. I know Baltimore's defense is good, but this, this is all they've got is Latavius Murray. Um, so as long as they can try and keep it close, Lamar is a little hobbled as well. So hopefully that helps out Latavius. He can run a little bit. And then Brian Robinson is going to be the other one. Antonio Gibson, a little bit banged up. Um, only 63 and a half rushing yards. I think he'll probably get around 20 carries. So very doable um, for those three. I'll take the over on those. Move over to the wide receivers. Jalen Waddle always has a great wide receiver line for whatever reason. 66 and a half yards. I mean, it is a good, a good defense, but 66 and a half yards is, you know, could be just a couple catches. Um, we've got Keenan Allen. I'll take the over on 64 and a half receiving yards. Obviously, no Mike Williams. A couple catches could be there just for Keenan Allen. Um, Sky Moore is another one. 24 and a half receiving yards only. He's had over that the last two games. Miko Hardman is out again. I don't expect them to go crazy, but I mean, 24 and a half yards, uh, very doable um, for Sky Moore this week. We've got Chris Godwin, 69 and a half receiving yards. That one is a little, it's not too high, but 69 and a half is okay. Hopefully Mike Evans um, gets louder more. And uh, anyway, Godwin seems to be the guy these last couple of weeks. So I'll take that. And we've got three more. We've got my boy Amon Ra. Of course, he's been getting the over every single week. 76 and a half receiving yards. That you could pretty much lock in almost every week. We've got Christian Kirk. I'll take the 61 and a half receiving yards against that shit. Uh, Detroit mm -hmm. defense. And then the last one I got for you for number 10 will be Chase Claypool. 34 and a half receiving yards. No Mooney. Um, hasn't been crazy involved, but that's a catch or two. I expect him to be a little bit more involved. 34 and a half receiving yards is not much. So I'll take that. What do you think about any of those, Hammer? Yeah, those are pretty solid. Um, the, the only one that makes me a little nervous is the Claypool thing, just because, you know, Justin Fields is supposed to play. Um, uh, you know, he runs around a lot and, you know, the passing game isn't exactly explosive, per se, but the Mooney, the Mooney point obviously is kind of what, what drives that projection there. So that's the only one that would make me nervous out of, out of the, the 10 pack. Yeah. I just like it because it's low. It's just a very low amount. He caught that nice pass last game. Um, yeah, he did. Line. And uh, yeah, so without Mooney and, and I think maybe Fields throws it a little bit more. Maybe he doesn't run it as much. I don't know, uh, but we'll see. I just feel like the 34 and a half is do very doable. That's one or two catches. Um, so Anyway, uh, those are the locks for Underdog. Anyway, that will end it for now. And um, tune in later, boys and girls. We out.